In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services. Nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 
Viagra's a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Is debt beating you down? You need discipline. You need the Debt Ninja. If you've been caught in a financial trap and need to be set free, then you need the Debt Ninja. Want to stop those harassing collection calls? Start saving thousands in interest and fees and get out of debt fast? Then you need to call the Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja will find the best companies across the country that will help you consolidate all your bills into one easy payment, reduce your payments by 30 to 50%, and get you out of debt fast. If you have unsecured debt of $10,000 or more, such as credit cards, loans, or medical bills, call the Debt Ninja for a free 15-minute consultation. Call 800-826-1246. 800-826-1246. That's 800-826-1246. Call today. The Debt Ninja. They say we offer simple answers to complex problems. But perhaps there is a simple answer. Not an easy answer, but simple. It's common ground. It's common ground. It's common ground. It's common ground. ground. We have serious problems to solve, and we need serious people to solve them. Republicans and Democrats. I have a guest with me right now. You may recognize her if you've been listening to me for a while. She's been on with me before. Uh, You may recognize her as uh, Bella Blue. She actually did a few episodes of Finding Common Ground with me a long, long time ago, back when all this was just really starting to get underway. But we have reconnected, and she actually decided she wanted to come on, and I figured it'd be interesting to have her back on since it's been a while since we've talked. So, Miss Bella, what have you been up to in the years since we have spoken? (laughs) Well, hello, and thank you again for the opportunity to come on the show, and it's great to work with you again. I want to say that, first of all. And so what's been going on? Uh, I've moved back to Oklahoma City from, from the Chicago area, and I am now pursuing um, a paralegal degree, and I'm working for an attorney, so I'm staying really busy. <laughs> so- and I was actually listening to our shows today and I just kept thinking wow that was awesome but it I mean there's so much I can do so much better so I think this has been a year of growth for me personally and professionally and I'm really in a great place and I just am really happy to have the opportunity to go to my other passion and love besides politics of course and law and that's radio and incorporating those two things as I've done in the past. So it's been a great year. How about you? Uh, lots of changes. When uh, you and I were doing the uh, couple of couple of guest co-host spots that you did uh, with me a while back, of course, that was under the K98talk.com banner. Of course, that station still exists, but I'm no longer affiliated with it. We're now over here on KLNRradio.com. Since that time, I've been on terrestrial. I've been off terrestrial. I've uh, got one of my shows syndicated at about six different places on iHeartRadio, Stitcher, FM Player, pretty much any kind of podcast thing you can imagine is pretty much there. Um, gotten to the point where I've interviewed uh, pretty prominent authors. I've had the uh, the head of the Libertarian Party on. I've interviewed. Um, nice. I've interviewed actually Bush 41's uh, chief of staff, who for some reason all of a sudden. Oh, John Sununu. Yeah, we actually did an interview with him about a year and a half. Sununu, ago. how interesting. Yeah, it was fun. He actually got mad at me because there was one point where he was trying to make a point and he misunderstood what I was saying back, so he thought I was attacking Bush 41. And I'm like, no, 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 no. that's not what I meant. <laughs> so, yeah, you. He, he, actually, he, he, that is so funny. That's, that's actually. Wow, your little brush with fame, and and how nice. (laughs) That's awesome. 
I yeah, love I mean, to you know, hear that show sometimes. All, all of a sudden, little old me has like press credentials and it's all official and stuff. Yes. And it's, it's just kind of funny thinking about it when it all started because we were like, we had no idea where any of this was going. And I had this crazy pipe dream and everybody that knew me was like, you are insane. You're never going to be able to do this. Why would you even start doing this? It's going to be nothing but hard work. It's never going to lead to anything. And look, I don't know if I'm ever going to turn the corner where I'm making more that more money to be able to do this full time and quit the day job etc none of that really honestly matters to me to me the the journey has been the fun part getting to meet people like you some of the other hosts that i've worked with some of which have actually gone on stepped down from doing uh internet based radio and they now write for a living and they do appearances on other radio shows etc so i mean this can be a springboard and i don't know where i'm going to wind up i may eventually wind up doing something else altogether different but one thing that i will never do is give up with making uh the station that i affiliate with first k98 talk and now klnrradio.com the best that it can be because i mean to me there's nothing better than this to be honest if i could find a way to do this full time and not have to do 40 hours a week and commute back and forth for an hour and a half a day i would completely love it because it, this is always what i've wanted to do i've i i used to play radio station from like age 5 up until as as early as i can remember was probably like age 5 now of course back then the cool thing was to be like the radio dj so it was like you're listening to blah 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 and i'm just like trying to pretend that i've got some dj voice or something um and i mean we literally did we spent like one summer almost every every time i was at my cousin's house we would get like the old boom boxes out and do the mixtapes but we would have one playing music and the other one we'd be recording what the when the music was playing and we'd be recording what we were saying and pretending we were djs and i mean so this is something that i've always wanted to do the technology coming around has made it possible to do it and so, I mean, I'm just going to keep swinging for the fences and see where I get. And wherever I land, at least, if nothing else, like I said, I've met really good people. I've gotten some really good connections along the way. I've, I'm now contributing for a million reader plus blog. I have a chance to go to work for one of two publications that will actually pay me for my writing. And it all started because I took that first step. And that's one of the things that in this country, when I hear people talk about how bad it is or how terrible it is the first thing i think of is nowhere else in the world could i have come up with an idea started it as a facebook page and gotten it to the point where pretty soon i could be making a decent living all from my computer working at home that that can't really happen anywhere else so people that badmouth the country are all these football players that are all of a sudden taking a knee at the national anthem look they have the they have the right to do that i'm not telling them they can't do that but don't disparage the country that gave you the freedom to chase your dream and get paid for it. That's not what that, that, that flag represents all of the things that you say you're fighting against when you disparage it by taking a knee. If anything, you should be standing stall, taller and straighter than anyone else out there because that anthem and that flag acknowledges the fact that this country is not perfect. So quit disparaging it and remind people why it's good to be an American instead of why it's bad to be an American. And do something with the millions of dollars that you have in your bank if you're really that worried about the things that matter to you. Sounds like relationships and marriage, and it's really crazy. <laughs> you know, the key thing that you talked about, and first and foremost, congratulations, and what a wonderful attitude you've got. And I'm honored to have met you on this journey of mine as well. But you mentioned that a lot of people said to you, oh, it's going to be a lot of hard work. Well, I've known you and your opinions for a while now, and I agree that hard work is absolutely, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's hard work. Yes, it's going to be hard work. But the fact that you didn't give up, the fact that you've stuck in there and hung in there, and now you're at a great place with all of it, and then you want to take it even farther, and you're just not giving up. And I agree, that's the same spirit that this country needs to have. And that hard work that people complain about, or anything else, mind you, that they want to complain about, is very petty. And, I mean, my thing is, I've actually done some research on some missionaries in other countries over this last year, and I've kind of gotten involved with human trafficking. That's kind of became my... I'm not sure what the word is. It escapes me right now, but it's my passion, I guess. It's it's something that I want to really help with. I had gotten quite a bit of exposure when I was in Chicago area, and I was talking to some people that were going and heading up these 
large organizations against human trafficking. And, I mean, the thing is, is it's this generation does not know what they have. They don't really know what they possess. I completely agree with you on that. So this football player, he's just another example of what the status quo is now, which in our day was not at all what the status quo was. And so it's a big shock to me, too. But what I'm finding out is that people in third world countries, they don't have running water all the time. Those are their concerns. Our concern is going to be whether or not we're going to uh, sing the anthem or go along with the anthem or be patriotic to our country. And that and that's what really disturbs me because all of the things that are going on in this world, I mean, I don't look at things in a local capacity. I'm global in my thinking. And so when I see how hard people are struggling just for the things that we take for granted every single day, that definitely frustrates me that somebody is, is, is acting like this guy. Same thing with the Olympic athlete, correct? I mean, these are just spoiled brats. Can I say it any better than that? Well, I, I th that's the way that we can keep it FCC related, just in case this does go over to terrestrial. So yes, that that, that's that, right. that I that, forgot we're regulated now. That that is a really nice way to put it. Yes, um, right. it's not necessarily the word that I would use if we weren't live on the air. Um, but right. again, oh, me too. Yeah, I'm I'm so glad that I that I caught myself. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 so, so here's uh, the, here's the thing with that, and again, I, and and I have a lot of the same thoughts that you do at this point because we need to start focusing on the things that are actual problems. And the, but the difference with me is I'm more focused on trying to fix the problems here first, so that we don't fall apart, so that we can help everybody else. And that doesn't mean that I'm being a nationalist, which is one of the things that I really really don't like about a lot of Trump supporters. But I think there are things that we need to focus on here. We need to find ways to fix the immigration issues here so that we without building a wall by the way the wall's a fallacy it's never going to happen he's walked back on it 14 different times he's changed it 14 different times first mexico was going to pay for it then they weren't going to pay for it now they're back to paying for it again because he got mad it's just he doesn't have a stance on anything he's a used car salesman going from room to room to room telling people what they need to hear and I'm not any happier with the other side of it anymore either. And what really ticks me off is I got so disenfranchised with everybody at the main two parties that I started really taking a nice, hard, long look at the Libertarian Party. And they had Austin Peterson trying to run. And he probably could have brought a lot of disenfranchised conservatives over to the Libertarian Party. But the Libertarian Party hierarchy decided they didn't really necessarily want a lot of disenfranchised conservatives because they didn't want to become the next conservative party. So they went with Johnson. Johnson, who basically his big part of his campaign platform is he wants to be able to eat a California or Colorado brownie once in a while and not get in trouble for it. You can. Just go do it right. in Colorado. Leave me alone. <laughs> well, and it's interesting that you brought that up, and I'm going to tell you why. Because in my one of my law classes the other night, actually, there was a really brave young lady in class that decided to ask the professor about that because he had taught at Tulsa University or University of Tulsa Law School. And so basically how he explained it is, look, the federal government is still the big head honchos. With Obama in office, yes, we technically have backed off these people. For one thing, they don't use a bank. It's all cash transactions. So that takes a lot of federal regulation out of it because people are curious. Well, so if this is really the way it is and states are, are having to answer to the federal government, how is it that Colorado and states like that are getting away with it and how they're getting away with it is I guess, evidently, Obama put in an executive order to not go in and, and you know, just start b busting them down, because that is really what could happen, and it's not to say it won't happen. He said we all have to make sure and remember that with a new president will come a new way of handling things if it's not... You know, if, I think if Trump had his way, absolutely, he would probably send in the troops to, to go bust everything down in, in Colorado. And federally, they can do that. They can still do that. But, but Obama has been very integral in keeping things the way they are on, on that. And I just thought I'd bring that up because that was actually 
something very interesting that I did not know until the other night and never really thought about, and I don't know that everybody else has really thought about it. The fact that Colorado is in the black and doing very well, and the cynical part of me that thinks the federal government is getting something out of this deal, um, let's be let's just be real, and I think that's very that's very possible. Um, so something to think about there. Being a nationalist is a great thing. As a liberal Democrat, I'm constantly told that I'm too concerned about the backyard, and I'm too concerned about right here in our own home territory, which is why I'm always saying, let's get out of some of these countries. But I just think we need to, I think what I was trying to really get across from that was that we do need to take care of our backyard and we do need to take care of our people. But we need to be appreciative of our resources and what we have. We are very, very capable of taking care of things here. This is the same thing that Hillary said at the Democratic National Convention. It was pretty much the core theme, I felt, of her speech. And that was, hey, you know, Trump and all his doom and gloom, it doesn't need to be that way. We can still be the greatest country. I think everything she said was really spot on, and I think, you know, I totally agree with you. Absolutely take care of problems here, because now things are so crazy, and we're back in a civil war. I feel we're really back into the very beginnings of another civil war, a modern-day civil war, which can be very detrimental to everybody. So with us being so disenchanted with our candidates, I think it's pushing us to all come together and come up with better solutions in the future, and everybody needs to get out and vote, and everybody needs to participate, and that's the the best way that we can get everybody together. There has to be unity. I know I'm sounding like Hands Across America here, and let's all sing Kumbaya. And that's I, 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 I was going to say, do, but, we need, do, we, do we need to go hug a tree now? My boyfriend said he felt like that's what the DNC was all about. Oh, come on. And he is a yellow dog Democrat himself. However, he was like, really? You know, <laughs> some of the speeches, he's like, okay, let's all join hands. But, I mean, honestly, that's what we need to do. And I think, honestly, you're very correct in talking about the Libertarian Party. That party may come up in the future in the rankings, and it may not just be bipartisan anymore. Maybe we are pushing into a political age of changing the bipartisan system. What do you think? Well, that's actually what I'm working towards. I'm actually involved in a group uh, uh, called Rescue America that's actually working on founding another party. Um, What we're trying to do is get to the point where we have as many party choices as possible on the ballot so we can break the two-party stranglehold. Because the one thing this election cycle is, is... verified for me because i've said i've always thought for a very long time that both parties kind of have the same agenda they're just trying to get everybody to the same place in different ways they're not even really trying to hide it very much anymore because it was kind of blatant to me because we saw dnc talking points at the rnc and then we saw the dnc adopt a lot of the pro-america pro-platform pro-freedom stances that the rnc used to be known for so you you literally almost saw the you know the party flip that everybody always talked about that supposedly happened back in the 60s i think we're about to see it again if we're not careful because but this time there's not really anything to it other than they see what's working and they're both trying to work towards stealing each other's votes. I mean, I at this point, like I told you off air today, I am no longer partisan. When you and I met, I was a dyed in the mold, red blooded, Republican's best way to go kind of guy. That that's who I was. That's because that's what I believed. But as I've gotten more connected with this stuff and I've seen a lot of the stuff that's been going on behind the scenes, I am thoroughly to this point of the mindset that the government is no longer of the people, by the people, for the people. It's a group of rich people trying to make sure that they hang on to their power and they're willing to do it by any means necessary. And a lot of the ways they do it is by keeping us distracted and angry. They do that through the media and they do it through the election cycles and this one's no different. But believe it or not, we're already at the bottom of the hour. <laughs> I, I, you know, I can believe it. Um, go Ron Paul. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's the solution. I don't know. Um, I, I, I think it's great, though, that uh, we've had a chance to visit and we'll definitely touch on some more things the next time. Absolutely. Well, it's been awesome having you back on. All right, folks, we're going to take a really quick break, pay some bills. When we come back, we have Jess from Jess's POV with some breaking news about it's Hillary's ground. emails. It's coming ground. It's coming ground. It's coming ground. We 
have serious problems to solve, and we need serious people to solve them. Republicans and Democrats. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. All writers are prone to becoming so attached to our characters and stories that we struggle to see why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing to full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, shaping stories into masterpieces that can stand the test of time. Editing services are provided for all genres and all age categories. Services range from critiques of the short story through to the line edits of the full-length novel and copy editing for those preparing for publication. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's file for your website, as well as help with those book blurbs and promotional material. We won't abandon you to the masses. We want to celebrate with you and your successes. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services and prices, visit us at blackwolfeditorial.com. Individuals and businesses with tax problems, listen carefully. Do you feel like you're losing control over your finances? If you owe over $10,000 in back taxes or have unfiled tax returns, we can help you take back control. The IRS is the largest and most aggressive collection agency in the world, and they can seize your bank account, garnish your paycheck, close your business, and file criminal charges. Take control of your tax problems now by calling the experts at Tax Mediation Services and take advantage of the Fresh Start program and new laws that may allow us to negotiate a settlement for the lowest amount possible. Our team of tax attorneys and enrolled agents can stop collections and get you protected so you can take control of your financial future. Tax Mediation Services is accredited by the Better Business Bureau. Call now for a free case review and a price protection guaranteed quote. Call Tax Mediation Services now at 800-610-9050. That's 800-610-9050. 800-610-9050. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. It's common ground. It's common ground. It's common ground. It's common ground. We have serious problems to solve, and we need serious people to solve them. Republicans and Democrats. All right, folks, welcome back. We were just spending the first half of the show with a flashback from the past, Miss Bella Blue, who did a couple of guest hosts with us on Finding Common Ground right about the time that. Uh, K98 Talk, the station I used to work for, was just founded. Um, she actually came on and talked with us for a little bit. Now we're going to uh, change gears a little bit. We have our very own Jessica Sanders, host of Jesse's, uh, Jesse's POV, with us. She has some um, breaking information that she wanted to make sure that she got out live on the air. So I'm going to turn the mic over to her and let her have some fun. All right. 
right. First of all, for all you listeners, if you listen to my show, I try and keep the politics off of it. I've thought of this as a crossover story, but I decided against doing it unless I did it as a slowdown. And I still try and keep the politics off my show. But for those of you who don't recall or don't know my background or haven't listened to my show, I am a special forces widow. My special forces husband was my first husband. My So anyway, I grabbed, when Hillary's emails went up on Wikipedia, I, of course, with half the country, ran over and started searching through. Now, I didn't just search, search the obvious terms. I had a hint of how, thing, how to look for things. When you're around these people, you kind of pick stuff up, right, Rick? Oh, yeah. All right, so I found, I have three or four emails printed out in front of me. And after reading them, I grabbed the emails and pulled one of my spec op buddies aside and said, with the information contained in this, how hard would it be to figure out uh, Chris Stevens' location? And the spec op guy looked through and he's like, can you find Walmart in a strange town? And I went, you're kidding me. He's like, no. American footprints are very distinctive. They're very obvious. And if you know what to look for, especially if you're a foreign national and you can recognize outsiders, it'd be about that hard. So given that information, I dug and dug. And I wanted to read bits and pieces of some of these to you, Rick. I'm just trying to find go with the oldest one first, and I've sure. got them probably in the wrong order. But we're going to take a hint here. And I'm going to skip through some of it because I don't feel the need. Let's see. April 21st, April 25th, August. All right. So we're going to start with the... April 21st of 2011. And the subject of the email is Benghazi staffing. And no, this is not one of Rick's parody server things. I promise. From Huma Abedin. <laughs> and no Huma wonder Abedin. you said that. And Huma, it's Huma Abedin at her, at state, at state. I had her state gov email, so I'm not going to read out the full email address. It probably doesn't exist anymore, but, and, uh, it was originally, for, uh, it was a forward from Jeffrey Feltman and it, the subject was Benghazi staffing. So Madam Secretary, I wanted to let you know about a temporary, temporary rotation in Benghazi. TNC. Envoy Chris Stevens has been on the road since March 13th when he began his outreach mission and has been in Benghazi since April 5th. This was put on Clinton's private email server. And Jeffrey Feltman, according to the subject, the title under his email address, is the Assistant Secretary Bureau of Near Eastern Affairs. Now, he didn't originally send it to Clinton. He he sent it to Huma Abedin, who's the one that forwarded it to the Clinton private email server. And there's a whole bunch of other things about who was acting as envoy during Chris's absence. Uh, TNC is one of, uh, one of the groups in Benghazi. So, like I said, it's one of those things. And it also says is... One of the other sentences I found interesting in here is, I know how important it is to have continual coverage in Benghazi. So, they they were definitely wanting a presence in Benghazi for whatever reason, which I'm not going to get into why. Not this time. Um, this one's a little bit older. I actually got them a little out of order. But this was from March 27th of 2011. And the subject was... Uh, Chris Stevens mission. And again, it now it parts of this are redacted. It was forwarded from Huma Abedin to the Clinton 
server. Jake and Huma, please find a status report on Chris Stevens' mission to Benghazi. Thanks, Tim. All right, the, and it goes on to say, the current game plan was for Mr. Stevens to move no later than Wednesday from Malta to Benghazi, who will stage offshore initially for a one-day visit during which he will have me meetings with TNC in, uh, interlocutor locutor, ugh, locutors and get a sense of the situation on the ground. The goal of this one-day trip is for him to lay the groundwork for, st for stays of up to 30 days. He will comp accompanied by a DS team. DS does stand for Diplomatic Security. A staff member from Embassy Tripoli and the leader of U.S. AIDS DART team. With the support of Ambassador Kretz and the Embassy Tripoli, Mr. Stevens in contact with INC members on the ground in Benghazi. Elsewhere, the team is also in contact with other diplomatic missions and NGOs in Benghazi. All right. This was the one my spec app guy went. That was on a private server. I mean, his eyes bugged out. He wanted to burn the thing, rip it out of my hands, and take a lighter to it. I'm like, sorry, sweetie. I got it off WikiLeaks. It wouldn't help anything. And he was absolutely appalled that this much information had been put out on an unsecured channel. He was livid. Now, for those of you, you know, considering these guys deal in classified information all of the time, if you think about special forces, how much, you know, Classified information do they deal with? 90% of it, of what they do, is classified. And he's like, half. this tells you approximately what day he's going to be there. How he's coming in offshore. So he's probably coming in on a boat. How hard is it to st stake out the Benghazi docks? Okay, uh... Well, we have all we what about just keeping an eye on Ambassador Kretz? You know, he's like, there's so many loopholes in this and so many ways his location could have been garnered from this information. And I'm not going to point them all out because I don't want to give away any tactics. But what about the leader of USAID's DART team? Well, hello. That's somebody the locals are going to know because guess what? They're the ones handing out the food and the goodies, Rick. How far do you think the locals let him out of their sight? Probably not very far, because like you said, he's the one handing out all the goodies. I mean, if he's he's the one that hands you your daily rice and meat, you're going to know, or at least you know that it's coming through him somehow. You're going to make friends with him and keep an eye on him. So this was just really, I mean, the guy was absolutely incensed. Absolutely incensed that this came out, this much information came out. And I asked, I asked about the, uh, it wasn't really a consulate in Benghazi, but the State Department location in Ghazi, since I'm sure there's an official term for it. And I was like, how easy would it have been to pick out? You know. And he went... If somebody repaints a house down the street, do you notice it if you drive down that road every couple of days? If somebody suddenly paints a house purple and it was white a week ago, you'll probably notice. Just like if big black Suburbans, U.S. Hallmark, by the way, start parking in, a, in front of a house which the U.S. State Department facility in Benghazi was little more than a, an overgrown estate. But if you suddenly see big black suburban, some of them up armored, some of them not, going in and out of the same house all the time, guess what? What? You found the U.S. They always traveled in these lovely big black suburbans. They are known for it. So this other email I was reading through... Hi, from Crete. I called Abu El Khatib to compare notes on Libya in advance of our arrival, where Chris Stevens 
is. Much of what Cadley has already been reported from his talks, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I mean, come on. We're, ben, you know, where Ben Chris is, and then part of it's redacted. And then it goes on to mention the word Benghazi after the redacted section. Kind of makes you wonder what's in that redacted section. <laughs> I could probably take a couple guesses, but I'm not going to because it's it is redacted. And sorry, Charlie, you have to figure it out on your own. Oh no, I mean I, I'm 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 just saying I'm I'm saying it's pretty simple at this point to figure out that there was probably a specific location listed in the redacted section. So I'm saying even in the re if they're looking at the unredacted portions and going, hey, yeah, you you we could probably find them in about ten minutes because they have pretty specific habits and certain types of footprints when they leave messages and do convoys, etc. So imagine what you could do with the unredacted version of that same email. That was kind of the point I was trying to make. Yeah, I mean, if this server was hacked even once, Rick, is it any wonder that the U.S. United States State Department's location in Benghazi was attacked? I mean, uh, let, let me put my tinfoil hat on for a second because you, you said if, if it was hacked once. I submit to you that it was hacked. I submit to you that they know it was hacked and that's why they started off by trying to blame it on a YouTube video that Hillary even swore in front of the parents of the dead victims that they were going to get the guy that made the video. They knew they were hacked. As soon as that attack happened, they knew they were hacked. They, they, they knew. That's why everybody went into lockdown mode and nothing happened. And that's one of the things that has me the most angry about all of this because we've even had Republicans that were pretending to go after things. If it was this easy for you to find it, how the hell did they miss it? The point is they didn't. Rick, uh, I'm, let me look at the markings on some of the emails I've already gone over. It notes whether they were turned over. Hang on to the commission or whether these were ones that WikiLeaks got that the commission may not have gotten. This one doesn't say I'd have to go back to the original website. That's where the markings are, unfortunately, and I didn't make notes on them. But I'm going to assume that the Benghazi Commission had most of these. Uh, then there's this one. The subject isn't outward, outwardly Chris Stevens, but you know me, I like, I'm an avid reader, and digging through the, these was no exception. So, it says, it's getting interesting. UAE-FM, which stands for United Arab Emirates Foreign Minister, Abdullah bin Zayed, and they abbreviate him most of the time, ABZ, just called. ABZ asked my views. I didn't see why INC would accept Sayef as a heading transitional authority. Translation, they were work, trying to work on, at least outwardly, building the rebuilding the government in Libya. TNC thinks time is on its side, plus Saif is indicated by the ICC, indicted by the ICC, International Criminal Court, and has, and has said and reportedly done awful things. Don't forget to check with Chris Stevens, in, and there's a few more things that are in here that are irrelevant, but then it mentions again, a couple sentences later, Chris Stevens' location is... Doesn't give the exact location, but it says Benghazi. I I called Abdul El Khatib to compare notes on Libya in advance of our arrival. Where Chris, where to meet Chris Stevens in Benghazi. Okay. How many times do we have to put Chris Stevens in Benghazi before someone figures out the man is in Benghazi? Apparently, not that many, because that's exactly what they figured out. Then, the last one. And this one was forwarded by Cheryl Mills to the Clinton homebrew server. Dear colleagues, Special Envoy Chris Stevens provided the update, the following update from Benghazi at 1200 EDT to Embassy Tripoli DCM, DCM, uh, Deputy Chief of Mission. 
Good thing I speak TLA, huh, Rick? Yeah, because I wouldn't add a clue. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. Most people don't. That's why I think a lot of this has gone over their heads, Rick. And this one isn't necessarily about Chris Stevens. Evidently, a U.S. vehicle traveling back from the Benghazi airport was struck by a Libyan vehicle going high speed, and the U.S. vehicle was going moderate speed, was struck by a Libyan vehicle going high speed at an intersection. And four people were killed and two were injured. And they were discussing paying off the locals to cover the funeral costs and keep it quiet. And that, okay, you want to bet, and I'm willing to bet, that they knew where that American vehicle was coming from and headed to. So, I mean, and they discuss Benghazi, another one, they name it four times in the thing, in the email, because they mentioned the ref, they referenced the local police department, which of course I'm I'm sure the local police department is on the up and up. Is that sarcasm I denote in your voice, (laughs) ma'am? How many buckets load would you like? Hey, I'll settle for the one. I'm going to let you keep some of it. (laughs) But I'm sure there's more than one. Oh, yeah. Then they go on to discuss other countries' comings and goings in this email and when their ambassadors were leaving the country and who was going to replace them and when. So this is just... I mean, how many times do you have to put a man in a location that is not Tripoli, Libya... For the natives to get go that's where he is let's go get him and then while I didn't find this in an email I did find reports and I was going through CIA declassified documents State Department declassified documents and FBI declassified documents and the security team that had been covering the Benghazi outpost for lack of a term here was pulled in August. Her last day was the end of August. So her her so her last day was what the the like the last, last day, day of August. The, security, the, la, the last day for the security detail in Benghazi for the U.S. security detail in Benghazi was the last day in August, and then the security got told turned over. To a local militia group. Yeah, I'm sure that went well. <laughs> well, we saw what happened. They they up and walked away before the attack. Well, it's probably. I mean, with, with as crooked as that whole area was in the first place, I wouldn't be surprised if there were several people involved in that local militia that knew the attack was going to happen. And that's one of the reasons why they just decided they were done. Oh, yeah. But yeah, thanks to this crazy election cycle, we now can either put the lady who's basically one of the tangible folks that's responsible for this whole mess, or a guy that's completely nuts in the White House, and one of those two is supposed to make things better. I don't see anybody's logic in this anymore. Um, But it just, it astounds me that, like I said, and, you know, look, here's the thing. Maybe the Benghazi Commission didn't get these things, but I have a question about that, because if it was that easy, even if they didn't, if it was that easy for WikiLeaks to get them and put them out everywhere, how is it that these very key important emails that actually show Everything that she says she didn't do, in plain view, that she did just that. She talked about the location of an American asset in an unclassified email on repeated occasions. And you know as well as I do, with the patterns of 
U.S. troop movements and U.S. ambassadorial ambassadorial group movements and the whole uh, government sector movements, like you said, they travel in very distinct vehicles. Everybody knows what they look like. Everybody knows what they drive in. So all you got to do is find one of them, figure out where it's going, and guess what you found? The place you were looking for, because you already knew the general idea of where he was. You knew he likely came in, most likely in a boat. All you had to do was stake out the, the, the docks. Wait for the black sedan with the government place to pull up, follow it back to wherever it goes, and say, hey, we found him, let's get ready to do this thing. And they literally made it that simple. But now she's a stone's throw away from being in the White House. That's what annoys me. That's what has me angry, because this was the election cycle where we could have stopped this, but instead, my side decided to put up her stooge, who has done nothing but block for her this entire time. This has done nothing but prove everything that I've been afraid of this entire time. They knew about this all along, and they didn't do anything. Because look, maybe like maybe it wasn't in the stack, but how hard was how hard would it have been for them to find it if they really wanted to look for it? Let's let's be real. Uh, let's let's not even talk about the fact that Trey Gowdy openly lied to the American public. Because you know as well as I do, there were assets in near and around Benghazi at the time of the attack. He blatantly said there weren't. I don't trust either side of the aisle anymore because they're doing nothing but trying to find ways to hang on to their own power and they have the same agendas and all they're doing is making us so angry that a lot of us can't see it. I got something for you about Trey Gowdy. Did you give me a bath? I hear him talking, but he don't come in. <laughs> That's about how I feel about pretty much all of them anymore. <laughs> I know, I know. I don't have sidestep queued up where I'd have grabbed that one. Oh, so. I just, I don't know. I mean, this this whole thing just amazes me. I mean, because, I mean, like you said, you, you, you didn't make the notes on there, and that's not that big a deal, because I wouldn't have thought about doing it either. Um, but the simple fact of the matter is, at least most of what you have in your hand right now, they probably got, and they didn't do anything with it. I mean, even the FBI... The, 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 the director if, of the if FBI. You look at the FBI notes. Hillary could, Clinton could not remember when or if she got classified information training. I'm sorry. First of all, first of all, she used a personally acquired BlackBerry device. A service she from used Singular 13 of them. And later AT&T wireless to access her email accounts. So she to change server to change services, and most of us know you usually have to change devices. And I, you know, singular and AT and T though not, she wouldn't have had to change devices. But she probably would have upgraded because I'm sure, just like the rest of us, she likes the latest and greatest. Not according to Uma, because you know this big story broke about the thirteen lost blackberries, most uh, some destroyed, others lost. And Uma's response to that was, well, she would she would regularly get an upgrade and decide she liked the old phone better, so go back to it. But at that point, she'd managed to lose the newer phone. Look, I mean, that's, that's absurd. That's, that is patently absurd. I don't know anyone in my life that has ever lost or destroyed 13 cell phones. I mean, it literally sounds like some, some sort of B-movie spy... Um, sp it literally sounds like some B spy movie drop where they just like, oh, we're just going to walk over here and drop this in this trash can right here, and you can just come pick it right up. The emails are all right there, and they're not even secured. I mean, look, that, that's that's how patently absurd this, sign, this sounds, because she's just, well, I lost my phone. Okay, I think everybody in their life has probably lost at least one phone. I will readily admit that there are times when I cannot find my phone. But I destroy my house or the last place that I knew it was until I find it. I have literally, since cell phones were invented, maybe lost one phone in my life to the point where I had absolutely no idea where it was. One, not 13. And I'm not a politician. And the thing that annoys me is she wants us to believe that she is the most capable person as commander in chief, but she can't even keep up with her damn cell phone. Okay, first of all. I do not have anywhere near as important a job as Secretary of State. My cell phone is literally usually on the charger next to me, on in a holster on my hip, or in a bag that's with me all the time. 
And I have a work phone as well, which guess what? Even though the number is the number is forwarded to my personal cell just so I don't have to carry more than one device because it's just a regular phone number where if I gave it to you, you could pick up a phone and call me. I still carry the actual device with me because what if what if I crack the screen or break my personal cell and I need to use a phone? I still keep it charged and still keep it with me. And then Rick, for the record... I've never lost a single cell phone. Hey. <laughs> Technically, I've never really lost it for um, other than an extended period. The, the the one I was referring to was one of the most recent phones that I had that I literally thought had been stolen off my desk at work because I had set it down somewhere and not realized that I had done it and not realized I didn't have it until I was already on the way home and by then they'd already locked the doors. So I expected to come back in the next day and see it sitting on my desk and it wasn't there. So I started tearing apart the office. I came home. I teared up my tore apart my living room because I was like, well, maybe I had it after all and it just fell out of my pocket and I didn't notice. I didn't find it until like a month later when I was cleaning up the truck after I had already replaced it because it had actually fallen out of my pocket into the seat and gone underneath the floorboard under the seat. So, yeah. Oh, and the other thing I was, when I was reading the FBI notes that they released this past week, Mm -hmm. Aberdeen Aberdeen had an email on Clinton1email.com. So if she says she wasn't aware of the server, guess what? Aberdeen's stated that the Clinton email Clinton one email system was going away and following the initiation of the new new domain, Aberdeen did not have access to her Clinton one email dot com account. <laughs> not aware of the server? Gee, so they lied. I'm not really surprised. <sighs> All right, well, believe it or not, we are officially out of time. We've actually gone a little bit over because we got a bit of a late start, but we are down to about 60 seconds at this point. Um, Why don't you remind folks where they can hang out with you should they choose to do so? All right, I am on Twitter at Jesse's POV. You can catch up up with me on jessiespov.com. Plus, I do have another show, Jesse's Coffee Shop. And I've got jessiescoffeeshop.com too. Now, Jesse's Coffee Shop is about authors writing authors writing in books. So it's a total break from all the politics, all the news, and everything else. In other words, it's her sanity moment. <laughs> hey, can I give a plug for the new science show? Sure. New show. It's going to be once a month. The first official episode is up, as well as an unofficial episode that was done on my show, as originally as part of my show, it has been uploaded. It's called Conversations Conversations in Science with Dr. Judy L. Moore. So she's going to be do, putting together an episode about once a month. Now, I'm going to let a little cat out of the bag. In December, we are going to be recording... A very special episode of Conversations in Science, Rick. It's going to be Star Trek and Star Wars and all those fun things. And we may even do Collins. All I have to say about Star Trek, right here. Okay, Rick. Hey, don't blame me. It's the 50th anniversary and you said Star Trek. It's by trigger. (laughs) (laughs) All right, folks. Well, on that note, we have got to make our way for the Rhino Report here coming up next. As always, if you want to uh, hang out with me, you are more than welcome to do so on Twitter. You can also hang out with me on the Facebooks or you can shoot me an email. Twitter handle AOTR underscore host. You can also find me on email at Ricky at the Spark Radio Network dot com or Rick at KLNR Radio dot com. Or you can shoot both the Facebook page, America is Coming Off the Rails, or my professional Facebook page, a friend request. We'll talk, we'll chat, we'll hang out. It'll be fun. But on that note, we have got to get out of here. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. We're almost to the end. Tomorrow's Friday. And don't forget, we have a uh, kind of a sneak-ish preview of the uh, the Robinson and Wright show tomorrow night. And then America Off the Rails moves to its new time slot on Monday. 
So I hope everybody has a great rest of your week. I will talk to you live tomorrow night on the Robinson and Wright Show. I'll be back with you first thing Monday morning as well. Um, America Off the Rails will probably, or not America Off the Rails, but Finding Common Ground will probably take a break this weekend. The college boy has family coming in, and he hasn't really seen them much lately, so we're going to do a replay of his show. I will probably edit a couple things together and put something together for FCG for Saturday morning too, but it won't necessarily be live. And on that note, folks, we are officially if you out. Bella to stand in. I, I tried actually. She, uh, that's why we decided to do the little thirty-minute interview tonight because I had tried to get her to do Saturday, but she has classes, so um, she is going to be standing by from now on to be able to fill in when she doesn't have Saturday classes, though. So that's cool because uh, she is actually a Hillary supporter, even with all the craziness. But it's kind of she's kind of like feeling like a lot of the Trump supporters that I know do is like I really am just kind of voting for this guy because I really don't think I have any other options, and I'm just like yeah, whatever. But do what you got to do. And on that note, folks, we are officially out because we are long. It's common ground. It's common ground. It's common ground. It's common ground. We have serious problems to solve, and we need serious people to solve them. Republicans and Democrats.